in this video, we're going to take a look at finding critical regions and critical values. So being able to find critical regions and critical values is a really important skill for hypothesis testing. And for this video, we're concerned about critical regions and critical values for the binomial hypothesis test. So we're considering both one-tailed and two-tailed hypothesis tests here. So to begin with, let's just consider a couple of definitions. So to start with here, let's consider the definition of a critical region. So a critical region is a region of the probability distribution where if the test statistic falls within the critical region, this would mean we reject H0. So let's just draw a number line here. Don't have to be perfect. And if I just put some values down here, like I said, this is nothing perfect here, but just so we can illustrate this concept here of the critical region. Now, this depends on whether we're working with a one-tailed or a two-tailed hypothesis test here. So to start with, let's just consider a two-tailed hypothesis test here. Now, for a two-tailed hypothesis test, we have to consider both the lower tail and the upper tail. So what we're saying here, for our probability distribution, there are regions where if we observe a value within that region, we would reject H0. So for example, these two first values here within our probability distribution, they may form part of the critical region. So critical region here. And if we observe a value within that critical region, we would reject H0. So we would reject H0. And same again here, we might observe these last two values here, and this would apply for um, a two-tailed hypothesis test here again, where we have to consider both tails. So again, if we observe a value within this critical region here, again, we would reject H0. So again, reject H0. So what about these values here in between? Well, in that case, we accept H0 if we observe these values here. If we observe these values here, we accept H0. This is what we call the acceptance region. We would accept H0 then if we observe these values here. Now, that's for a two-tailed hypothesis test. So what about a one-tailed test? Well, it's almost identical, really. The only difference here now is we only consider one of the tails. So in this case, if we have um, a one-tailed hypothesis test and we're considering the lower tail, then that would be this tail here. So if we observe one of these values here that falls within the critical region, then again, we would just simply reject H0. And if we're considering the upper tail here, which would be this tail here, again, if we observe any of these two values here, then again, we would reject H0. So I think that hopefully seems relatively straightforward. All we're doing here is finding these regions and then we, you know, we go from the observed value that we've observed and then we decide whether we accept or reject H0. So if it falls within the critical region, we reject H0. And then if it falls within the acceptance region here, then obviously we just accept H0. So what about a critical value then? What is a critical value? Well, the critical value is simply the first value to fall within the critical region. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly clear the screen and then let's take a look at this example here. Starting off with question one then, where we have a single observation that's recorded from a binomial distribution. So we can see the distribution here. Let's just highlight that. We're then told that the observation is used to test H0 for P being equal to 0.3 against H1 for P being greater than 0.3. And for part A then, it says given that the significance level of the test is 5%, find the critical region. So where do we begin here for part A? Well, for part A here, the first thing that we need to figure out here is whether we have a one-tailed or a two-tailed hypothesis test. And for this question here, we actually have a one-tailed hypothesis test. And how do we know that? Well, if we look at H1 here, because this is P being greater than 0.3, that indicates that we have a one-tailed hypothesis test. The same would be true if it was P being less than 0.3 again. That would be a one-tailed hypothesis test. And if P was not equal to 0.3, then that would be a two-tailed hypothesis test. Okay. So we have a one-tailed hypothesis test here. So what we're going to do here is assume H0 is true. Okay. 
So if we assume h naught is true, we assume h naught is true. Let's just write this down. Then if h naught is true, then our distribution here, our binomial distribution is b, n is 7, and p is 0 0.3. So 7 and 0 0.3. And let's just choose some random variable here. Let's say x. So x follows a binomial distribution with these parameters here. Okay. Now what we need to find then for the critical region here, because we're working with a one-tailed hypothesis test, we only need to consider one region or one tail here. So we need the following here. So we need the probability that our random variable x here is greater than or equal to some value, let's say little x, and that must be less than my significance level here, which is 5%. Okay, so that must be less than 0 0.05, like so. And now to find this probability here, all we're gonna simply do is use the binomial tables found at the end of our formula book. You can, of course, use your calculator. In this case, because the distribution here is relatively straightforward, my distribution here, like I said, is relatively straightforward, I'm going to simply use the tables here. So n equals 7 here and p equals 0 0.3. So we're going to be in this portion here of the table. So we're in these values here and p equals 0 0.3. So that means we're in this column here, like so. So working with these values here, these probabilities. Now, because this is greater than or equal to some value here, don't forget the actual probability is one minus. Okay, so we need to subtract here. So as a general rule of thumb, it's best to kind of start in the middle here. So if I say, for example, x equals three here, well, that would actually be the probability that x is greater than or equal to four because we do one minus this probability here of three. Okay, don't forget that's what this table shows us here. Probably that x is less than or equal to some value here defined as little x. So x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So like we said then, we start with the probability that x is greater than or equal to 4. And this is equal then, so like we said, 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. So to find this cumulative probability here, like we said, we just simply use our table here. So when x equals 3, that's 0 0.8740, so it's 1 minus 0 0.8740. And if you evaluate this here, you get 0 0.126. Okay. So clearly this here is greater than 0 0.05. So this is greater than 0 0.05. And obviously we haven't found this here yet. Now in this case here, we need to pick values larger than 4. Obviously, if I pick a value smaller, say I pick um, x is greater than or equal to 3, that would be 1 minus probably that x is less than or equal to 2. So there we'd be doing 1 minus 0 0.6471. And this value here would keep getting larger. So this probably would be getting larger and larger. Obviously, we need to get smaller and smaller here. We need to be less than 0 0.05. So we add 1 to this value here. We just go up by 1. So now we're looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. And just like we saw here, this would be 1 minus. So it's 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. Okay. So again, we just simply use our table here. So now we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.9712. So 1 minus 0 0.97. 1, 2, and again, just simply use your calculator here. So 1 minus 0 0.9712, and this gives me here 0 0.0, 0 0.0288 there. Okay, now 0 0.0288 is less than 0 0.05. This is less than 0 0.05. So therefore, we've now found our critical region because this value here is less than the significance level here. So therefore, the critical region, let's just write this down.
is x being greater than or equal to 5. So my critical region is just this here inside the bracket. So x being greater than or equal to 5. Okay. So that's the critical region. And x equals 5 would actually be the critical value. It's the first value inside the critical region. Okay. So that's part A done. Then for part B, it asks us to state the actual significance level of the test. So the actual significance level here is just this value. Okay. So that would be 0.0288. So actual significance level here. Let's just write this down in full. That is just this value here. So that would be 0 0.0288, which is the same as 2.88%. Okay, and there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to question one. So if we just take a look then at one more practice question here where we have a single observation that's recorded from a binomial distribution. So we can see the distribution here. We're then told that the observation is used to test H0 for P being equal to 0 0.35 against H1 for P being not equal to 0 0.35. And then for part A, it says given that the significance level of the test is 10%, find the critical region. So for part A then, the first thing that we need to deduce here is whether we have a one-tailed or a two-tailed hypothesis test. Now for this question here, we actually have a two-tailed hypothesis test. And how do we know that? Well, we look at H1 here. So because H1 is for P being not equal to some value, in this case, 0 0.35. So because it's not equal to, that indicates that we have a two-tailed hypothesis test. And because it's a two-tailed hypothesis test, we need to consider both the lower tail and the upper tail. So we're going to start with the lower tail here. So we're going to start with the lower tail. But before we do that, we're going to assume that H0 is true. So we assume H0 is true. So we assume H0 is true. So therefore, if H0 is true, we're saying that P equals 0.35. So if we have a random variable X, which follows a binomial distribution with parameters of 15 and P, where P equals 0.35. Okay. So for the lower tail here, what we actually need then for the critical region is the probability x, our random verbal x here, is less than or equal to some value, let's say little x here, and this must be less than 0.05. Now you might think I've made a mistake here, why have I got 0.05 when the significance level is 10%? Well the reason for that is because we have a two-tailed hypothesis test. So we need to half the significance level here. Okay, so half 10% is 5%, so 0.05 there. So to find this probability here, we're going to simply use the binomial tables. Again, you can also use your calculator, but because the distribution here, again, is relatively straightforward, I'm going to simply use the binomial tables. So for the lower tail, then, we're going to be working with these smaller values of x here. So for example, x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. So if I start by just saying that x equals 2 here, okay, we're looking for the probability so the probability that our random verbal x here is less than or equal to 2. So using the tables here to evaluate this probability then. So 0 0.35, this is this column here. And we're in the bottom half of the table here. This is where n equals 15. So for x equals 2, we're along from 2 here. And I get 0 0.0617. So 0 0.0617. Now clearly this here is greater than 0 0.05. So it's greater than 0 0.05. So now we need to go smaller here. So now we have the probability that x, or random variable x, is less than or equal to 1. So what is this probability here? So again we go across from 1, and I get 0 0.0142. So 0 0.0142 there. 
and this here is clearly less than 0.05. So because that is less than 0.05, we've now found the critical region. So the critical region here for the lower tail is x being less than or equal to 1. So that's the first part done, um, or the first part of part A. We now need to consider the upper tail here. So we're not fully done here. We also need the upper tail. So now let's consider the upper tail here. So that was the lower tail. Now for the upper tail then, what we need here is the probability that our random variable x here is greater than or equal to some value, let's say little x here. And again, this must be less than 0 0.05. So less than 0 0.05 there. And again, to find this probability here, I'm going to simply use the binomial tables. So for the greater than uh, values here, so for the upper tail, generally speaking, it's just best to start somewhere in the middle and go from there. So if I say that x equals 7 here, that would actually be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 8 because we do 1 minus this value here. So this is the probability that x, our random variable x here, is greater than or equal to 8 because we do 1 minus probability that x is less than or equal to 7. So this here will be 1 minus, so we go across from 7 here. So that's going to be 0 0.8868. So 1 minus 0 0.8868 there. So evaluate this difference here just using your calculator and you'll get 0 0.1132. So 0 0.1132. And clearly here this is greater than 0 0.05, but we need less than 0 0.05. So it doesn't work for this one. So that's greater than 0 0.05. So here now what we need to do is go larger here. So it's now going to be x being greater than or equal to 9. So greater than or equal to 9. That's going to be 1 minus probably that x is less than or equal to 8. So here this is going to be 1 minus now. So we'll go, go across from 9 here. So we'll go across and we're in this column here. So I get 0.9876. Okay, have I read that correctly? Um, oh, sorry, from 8, sorry. So going across from 8, 0.9578. So make sure you read across correctly there. And like you see, don't do what I've just previously done. So 0.9578. And if you evaluate this difference here, I'll do it on the same line, just keep it consistent. 1 minus 0 0.9578, that gives me 0 0.0422. 0 0.0422. There. Now 0 0.0422, that's clearly less than 0 0.05. That is less than 0 0.05. So here now we found our critical region for the upper tail. So the critical region here for the upper tail is x being greater than or equal to 9. So therefore, we've now found the critical region here for part A. So therefore, the critical region this will be given as then. So we've got x being less than or equal to one. We've got x being less than or equal to one, and we also have x being greater than or equal to nine. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to part A. So that's the critical region there for part A. Then for part B, similar to the previous question, it just says state the actual significance level of the test. So because we have a two-tailed hypothesis test here, we actually have these two probabilities. So it would be the sum now of these probabilities here. So I've got 0.0142 plus this probability here. So 0.0422. That sum there gives me the actual significance level. So let's just write this down here. So the actual significance level this is equal then to 0 0.0142 0 0.0142 plus 0 0.0422 
plus, this probably here, so 0 0.0422. Plus 0 0.0422. Plus 0 0.0422. So add these together, just do it using your calculator. So 0.0142 plus 0.0422, that gives me 0.0564. 564 there. And then as a percentage here, this is 5.64%. Okay. And there we have it. So 5.64% is the actual significance level of the test. Okay. And there we have it. So that, that brings us to the end of this video on finding critical regions and critical values.